All right. <laughs> so I was trying to um, try the watch party and I thought I could go live in the watch party. So I'm going to have to go live and then I'll have to create the watch party. So let's see. Let's wait and see. We get some folks on here. If you're watching the replay, my name is Tamara Hamilton. I am a certified content marketing strategist and creator of the 30 day influence booster content marketing challenge. So if you are joining us on this day live, please say hello in the comments so that I can know that you're here and give you a shout out. Um, would love to connect with you. It has been a while since I have come on here live. My bad. I know. I know. So um, I wanted to come on really quickly and uh, just give some of my observations because some of y'all hating on Bird Box big time in um, in the news feed. So if you have seen Bird Box, can you drop some sort of bird emoji below? If you have not, I don't know, put up a sad face emoji or a video or something um but if you have seen bird box can you drop a bird uh comment bird um emoji or a, a yes in the comments so that i can see who on here has seen bird box um i actually watched it by accident hey betsy hey tamika hello hello tamika has seen it I watched it by accident last weekend. I was actually in Chicago visiting my best friend. Her birthday was December 6th. We finally got together. Um, we had rescheduled it. We got together this past weekend, and I got to meet her new man with his handsome, cute self and personality-wise. And um, so I was in the room, and I was going through Netflix, and it was there. And I had never heard of it, didn't know y'all were talking about it all over social media. And so I was just trying to read the description. And then she was there and they were talking to me. And so I turned and started talking to them. And next thing you know, the movie was playing. And so I just continued to watch it. And next thing you know, I'm I'm scrolling the feed and everybody's talking about Bird Box. I think I have been living under a rock. I've he I just heard about it this week. Um, Kylie K. Schmidt has not seen it. Um, so, yeah, come on in. If you are an entrepreneur, especially an online or digital entrepreneur, or you know someone who is, tag them. You are in the right place because I'm going to give you some marketing knowledge because I think this movie was a great example of um, some, some clear and present marketing concepts that are going to be huge and continue to thrive in 2019. And that if you use these marketing concepts, you will be very successful online now and going forward. So if you'd like to know what those four or five concepts are, just throw me a smiley face emoji in the comments. Thank you for all the likes, whoever that is throwing up all the likes there. Um, I got a new tripod set up here. Here, a little bit of new lighting um so uh, first of all I'm hoping that you can all hear and see me okay you're still here so I'm assuming that you can and nobody has said that you can't you can't hear or see me so um, if you are growing any type of team if you are growing um, any type of online business um, have a community of online business owners um, please go ahead and share this video the shares are very much appreciated if at any time you hear something that resonates with you really well go ahead and throw up some love tap uh, double tap those hearts and throw those up and I, I can do a brief question and answer session at the end of this so let's roll okay so just to give you a little bit of a synopsis of the movie without giving any spoiler alerts, it's one of those apocalyptic type movies, um, which is kind of a hint where this is going. It's a it's an apocalyptic type movie. So it just starts like it literally just started for me, um, but it just kind of drops you right into the story like you're live like present day. And it actually then kind of flows back and forth between um, the present day and how she got to where she is now but the events leading up to where she is now there's still a missing component like there's these monsters and we don't know what these monsters are we never see them we kind of hear them a little bit okay and so there are these monsters and it ends up just being this woman this man and these two children one of whom is hers and one of whom is not and they have to wear these blindfolds because if they look at the monsters then they want to kill themselves okay 
And then there are, we also end up finding out that there are people who don't wear blindfolds and they have not turned and killed themselves yet. So there are a lot of questions that end up um, happening throughout this movie. But anyway, back to the plot, they end up having to get in this boat um, and they are going to have to go through these rapids and they have, but they can't take their blindfold off because if they do, one of the monsters is going to show up and they're going to want to kill themselves and who wants to see a four or five year old kill themselves, right? So no spoiler alert to how it ends, but that's kind of the gist of it. The big thing I want you to focus on here is the fact that this is one based on a book, okay? And I've seen some of people's um, interpretations. I'm not here to interpret the movie from a movie perspective. I'm here to talk to you strictly as a marketing strategist, okay? So one of the big things I want you to walk away with is the fact that one of the big things that people are talking about online about this movie is one of two things. They're talking about the fact that they have a lot of questions because there are what we call open loops, right? And the other thing is the ending. People, it's a lot, you either love the ending or you hate at the ending, okay? So the number one thing I want you to walk away from this movie is curiosity marketing. The fact that we never saw that monster is a huge deal for a lot of people. And that's why people are talking about it is because they have this open loop, which is point number two, the Zeitger effect, the open loop, okay? So let's go back and stick on point number one, curiosity marketing. Are you with me? If you're with me, throw up a one in the comments. I need to know that you're with me, okay? Because a lot of my network are independent solopreneurs and you may be partnered with a company. And I've seen your posts about, well, if y'all promoted y'all friend's business the way you promoted, um, whatchamacallit, Bird Box, the world would be a much happier place. Okay, let me stop you, boo-boo. <laughs> people are going to do what people do. It's human nature. And it's not your friend's fault that you haven't figured out human nature and how to incorporate that into your business, okay? Because if you figured out how to incorporate curiosity marketing in your business, then you wouldn't be having this conversation, right? It's perfectly normal for people to want to talk about something that is still going on in their brain. The brain cannot c complete because that loop is still open. We don't know what the monster was. We don't know what the monster looked like. So that is one of the number one reasons that people are talking about Bird Box is because the loop is still open. We don't know. And until we know that loop is going to be open and we're still going to keep going back and trying to close that loop. And so that's why people are coming on Facebook and talking about it because the loop is open and they want to know what other people think. Okay, so you have to have curiosity marketing. Okay, so don't get mad at Netflix and Bird Box because they did a great job of curiosity marketing. Learn from it and use curiosity marketing in your business. So how do I use curiosity marketing in my business? That's a good question. You ask good questions. I'm glad you asked that question. How do you use curiosity marketing in your business? Is stop giving all the information away right? I see y'all do it all the time. Even people who take my courses and do the challenge with me, we get so excited when somebody finally asks a question and then you answer the question right there in the comments. Everybody can see it. And now the loop is closed. They don't care anymore. They're on to the next stat. Leave the loop open and close the loop one-on-one -on -one in a personal conversation. Okay, take it to the DM. It goes down in the DM. What? Where does it go down? In the DM. So curiosity marketing is not listing every single thing that's on your face in the post. You just say, oh my God, I love this new lipstick. What do you think? And then when people start saying, oh my God, that's beautiful. Who is that by? You do not answer in the comments. You answer one on one. That's curiosity marketing. Curiosity marketing is not dropping your link in the comments. Dropping your link all in people's inboxes. That's not curiosity marketing. That is lazy marketing. See, we think that because it's online that it's supposed to be easy. It might be easier in some respects, but it is still work. You still got to put in work, girl. You got to put in work. And part of that work is 
Curiosity, remember that saying, curiosity killed the cat. Curiosity marketing is where it's at. Stop giving up all the information. Give them just enough to tease them and make them want to ask you so that you can have a conversation. Okay, so we're clear on point number one. From a marketing perspective, why Bird Box was successful? Because we never saw those monsters. So our imaginations are at, at work. They're busy, 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 busy. That loop is still open, okay? And that is the second one, is the Zyker effect, okay? We will remember what is still open. You will forget closed loops. I forget how it ended, right? I forget but you will remember the open loop. And that's what they did. They created open loops. Even the ending was left so that they can have a sequel if they choose to. It's about creating open loops, okay? So do things in a series. Do a series, okay? This week, I'm going to share with you the top five tips to decluttering your closet so that you can have a nice, clean, organized closet going into 2019, right? Make it a series, and then people are always going to come back. Give a hint. That's what soap operas have done since I was a little girl. Who shot JR? right? It was a series. The whole season was trying to figure out who shot JR. And then finally in the season finale, they showed us who shot JR. And even still to, the, to this day, the best marketers, the best TV shows will give you a snippet of what's to come in the next episode. Just enough to get you to come back and figure out what's happening because that curiosity is at play. Ooh, what's what's really happening with Annalise next week? You know, ooh, how to get away with murder is an awesome example of open loops. And they have so many of them going at once, you know, the subplot that are that's going on with these open loops and it just draws you in, right? So the two the top two so far, we talked about curiosity marketing. And now we're talking about open loops. Those two kind of work together, but they're strong enough that they need it to be two points on their own. And this third one is important, okay? So if you want to know the third one, drop a three in the comments. Drop a three in the comments. Because this is why your friends are talking about Bird Box and they're not talking about your business. And this is gonna piss some people off. So you might not wanna hear it. Hi, Elaine. So drop a three in the comments. Juvakia, I always say her name wrong, wants to know. Joe Lyons wants to know. Get a couple more people who want to know this one. This one is gonna piss some people off, okay? Elaine wants to know. Elaine wants to know. Put on some fresh hair for y'all today. Did a little bit of face, lips. Oh, I even got on a new shirt. I got dressed for y'all today. I actually have on real pants, not pajama pants, and some fuzzy socks and my um my slippers. All right, so three. All right. So here's the deal. You think you are entitled to your friend to promote your business. First of all, it's not your friend's responsibility to promote your business, okay? You have to earn the right for your friend. Wow, I just went in for it. I didn't even, I mean, straight, no chaser, no lube. I'm just going straight in. I'm sorry. Well, we're here, so let's keep rolling, right? You have to earn the right. You are not entitled to your friends and family promoting your business. Yes, they love you and they support you, but you they do not owe you anything, right? So if you owned a restaurant, do you expect them to eat dinner in there seven days a week? Absolutely not, okay? This is a free society. They can talk about and promote whatever it is that they want. The reasons why they are not promoting you are a few, okay? Number one, is all you talk about is the product. All you talk about is the company. All you talk about is people that they don't even know or care anything about. And so they see no value in what you're talking about. There's no nothing that's going to catch their attention like Bird Box got everybody's attention, 
Okay, you're not getting their attention. And whose fault is that? Is that your friend's fault? Or is that your fault? I'll wait, drop it in the comments. Whose fault is it that your friends don't you, you don't have your friends attention? Whose fault really is it? Okay, let's let's have a moment of transparency, a moment of trust. Whose fault is it? Is it the marketer's problem? Or is it the friend's fault? Whose fault is it? The marketer or the friend? Because I know, you know, none of y'all do this. So y'all don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want y'all to have to get all like, oh, yes, it was me. Whose fault is it? Don't get quiet on me now. Don't get quiet now. Whose fault is it that your marketing is not capturing your friends? It's not their problem. It's not their fault, Elaine. It's not their fault. We have to take ownership for our marketing. It is the marketer's fault because you think you can just steal from over here and post it. You think you can just share, share, share from your company's page, which is dumb because they're going to go back to the company in order, not to you. And you're not taking ownership of your marketing and actually putting out content worth talking about worth sharing and that is providing value y'all got me feeling like a baptist minister and you know my granddaddy is one right now okay it is your own fault that your friends are not promoting your business if you want your friends to promote your business here's how you get your friends to promote your business you provide them with world-class customer service don't half-ass do it because they're your friend right you provide them with something that they can't get anywhere else. Because lip gloss, you can buy lip gloss just about anywhere. Right? You can buy whatever else it is that you're selling just about anywhere. So you've got to do a good job of making sure that you're communicating what differentiates your product. And the number one thing they're buying ain't the product anyway. It's you and your story. And because you're not getting online and you're not being transparent and telling your story, you're hiding behind the company, the product, and everything else, and you're not creating visually stunning content that stops the scroll, that's why they're not sharing your content. Okay? That's why they're not sharing your content. Because you're being a lazy marketer. Okay? And I don't care if you're doing lives. If you're not going live and talking about something worth talking about, then that's why they're not sharing your content. If you're not providing value, if you're not educating, if you're not inspiring, that's why they're not sharing your content. Okay? So you have to first take ownership as a marketer of your marketing and say my marketing is going to knock everybody else on their butt because I'm the best marketer there is out there. I'm going to kill everybody else with customer service. I'm going to give them an experience. So instead of dropping a link in the comments, I'm going to give them an experience by one, performing a consultation to make sure that they're getting exactly what they need and nothing more, nothing less. And I'm going to service them to death and they're going to keep coming back to me because of the level of service that I provide. And I'm going to share that story so that more people are attracted and want to come work with me. So Bird Box isn't the issue. Bird Box isn't the enemy. Bird Box did just that. They provided you with enough curiosity to get you talking. They also left that loop open to get you talking, and now word of mouth is in play, right? And instead of mocking Bird Box or being a hater, how about we learn from Bird Box and start emulating some of those same marketing concepts? Because Bird Box provided entertainment value. It also made people think. From what I've heard in my timeline, it also really drew out emotion in people. And these are things that your marketing needs to do. And copying and pasting word for word someone else's post doesn't do that. Because your friends and family know you better than anybody else, don't you think? So they know if it sounds like you or if it sounds like somebody else. They know if you make all kinds of spelling errors and have to go back and clean them up. 
right? So they know if you wrote that or not. That again is lazy marketing, copying and pasting somebody else's post word for word. I don't know why we think it's okay to steal other people's content without giving them credit, right? We think because it's on the internet that makes it free. No, somebody invested in the app. They invested their creative brain to come up with it. And you need to either use it as inspiration to create your own and emulate it, or you need to share it and give credit, okay? So Bird Box, I'm the, I really am loving seeing the discussion online and I'm like I don't think people are even fully understanding what's happening here so let me go live and talk about it okay so, <clears throat> so I've got one more marketing concept that you need to know and really make sure you're practicing now and going into 2019 engaging engagement is the barometer okay engagement is everything if your content isn't engaging at the end of the day, nobody's paying attention and nobody's going to share. You want to be creating shareable content that is engaging because engaging is what's going to take it viral, getting more and more people to talk about it, getting more and more people engaged. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but your posts about your company and your product are not going to be the posts that go viral. They're just not. In more cases than not. You have a much greater chance probably of winning the lottery that your post about your company or product are going to go viral. It's going to be your post using dental floss showing how to slice up a watermelon very easily. I've seen it. Last I looked at it, it had like 10 million views. 10 million views and she's a top leader in her company. The video was like a minute long and she mentioned nothing about the company or products. She was simply showing something of value and use, something they'd never seen before. That wow factor, which is huge, right? So let's recap. You've got to generate curiosity. You've got to create open loops. You've got to create shareable content that is of value that by educating, inspiring, or engaging, or edifying other people, and engaging content, okay? So that's what Bird Box did correctly, and instead of being bitter, because that's what we sound like when we say, because I'm not going to support you if that's your response. Well, if you supported your friends, it's like you supported Bird Box. They're just having a conversation about a movie. Isn't that what y'all tell people about y'all companies anyway? Well, it's just like if you go to a movie and you like a movie and you share that movie. It's the same thing with these products. So now why are you turning around and being a hater and a hypocrite on top of it? Right? Okay? So curiosity is the number one thing. Stop giving up all the information. Okay? Create those open loops. And I didn't put this on here, but out service people because Bird Box didn't, I don't know, that, that, that really applied to Bird Box. But that's my spiel and I'm sticking to it. Out service your competition, okay? Shareable content, provide value, educate, inspire, okay? Give them something they've never seen before, entertain. Bird Box was high entertainment value for a lot of people. People were like, oh my God, buy anxiety, right? And engaging. The conversation around Bird Box is engaging and that's what's making it go viral. So how can I serve you today? What questions can I answer for you? What questions can I answer for you? It's been on my heart to do this. I finally look presentable enough to do it. I actually looked presentable, very presentable on Christmas, but there was just way too much going on to go live and talk about it then. But I watched, I've seen it like three times now because there is a nice piece of chocolate in there. Very nice. Tom, it's very handsome, very handsome. So what questions can I ask for you? If there are no questions, I'm going to go. I will be going. All right, so I see no questions, so I am going to go, and I will be talking to you later. Just saying hi, hey, happy birthday, beautiful. Talk to y'all later. Bye.